Hello, my name is Tucker Partridge. Today, we'll be examining a painting from the Louvre, a museum where I could spend the rest of my life and still see new works every day. However, there's one painting in particular I'm here to see, and it's my favorite. The time was 1830. After enduring several years of revolution at the turn of the 19th century, the French people were once again plunged into chaos. Napoleon Bonaparte had fallen years before, and the current king, Charles X, was deemed unfit to rule. An uprising saw him overthrown. A young man saw this revolution and was inspired. Eugene Delacroix, an established painter known for such works as Massacre at Chios and Death of Sardanapalus, saw these events. He realized that despite several revolutions, the French Republic had no identity. He decided to paint the events of the 1830 revolution, but in such a way that the people would develop an identity. What he created became a staple of French culture and identity. Liberty Leading the People Painted by Eugène Delacroix in the late autumn and early winter of 1830, Liberty Leading the People is a French national masterpiece and perfectly encapsulates the mood of the revolutions experienced in the early to mid-1800s. The painting is a well-known representation of the Romantic art movement, a style of which Delacroix was a pioneer. According to the BBC, he believed that emotion was a more important aspect of art than was the polish of a piece of art. Liberty Leading the People is definitely influenced by this philosophy. The emotion in the face of the figures, living and dead, is very present. The painting itself also stirs emotion in the viewers, especially those from France. This painting was made to create a nationalistic pride, with liberty incarnate leading the revolutionary French. For these reasons, the painting is undoubtedly a contextual masterpiece, but it is also an artistic masterpiece. The painting itself is very busy. Liberty, symbolized by a brawny, bare-breasted woman, stands over corpses of the fallen in the center of the work, carrying a musket in her left hand and the French tricolor in her right. On the right side of the painting, Liberty's left, stands a little boy holding two pistols, raising one triumphantly in the air. On the left side stands a man in a top hat brandishing a rifle, and to his left stands a man with a saber raised. Behind them are a crowd of revolutionaries, however these figures are not detailed. A sky full of smoke lightens around Liberty's head to illuminate her. The ground is littered with the corpses of revolutionaries and guards alike. The painting is very engaging, but it is the technical aspect of this painting that truly makes it a marvel. The painting was an oil painting, one of the more popular forms of media at the time. Using oil painting, Delacroix was able to create deep color and a variety of hues. Previous styles of painting required acute attention to detail, but the romantic nature of Delacroix allowed him to circumnavigate these limitations, because romantic paintings did not require such detail. The lines are definite and yet are thin, like you might expect of a painting depicting semi-realistic human figures. The figures are rigid enough to be recognizable as human, and yet are abstract enough to allow the figures to seem mobile and emotional. Color and light are very important in relation to the painting. Delacroix darkened the areas around Liberty by employing darker colors. This is especially evident with the corpses. He then lightened the area around Liberty, most notably around her head, to create a reverent, almost holy mood. This is well in line with the French crave for freedom which was ever present in the Revolution. The painting's space is crowded with almost eight figures, including corpses, stuffed into one area. This creates both the hectic feeling of combat and the camaraderie of those fighting for a good cause. Viewers feel like they are a part of the cause because they are crowded in with liberty and the revolutionaries. As a whole, light, color, space, line, and medium interact to form an almost propagandist composition. The painting is a sort of call to arms to fight for the cause of liberty. By depicting liberty in an aura, and the corpses in darkness, viewers know they should follow Liberty and fight for her, or be left behind. The eye focuses on the center of the painting, right at Liberty, before traveling around her to see her supporting cast. 
These elements put together make this painting a romantic masterpiece. Delacroix wanted to depart from the highly detailed, highly darkened works of Baroque popularity in favor of a colorful, emotional, less polished style of art. According to the Louvre, the painting itself was created in reaction to the Trois Glorieuses, or Three Glorious Days, a time when revolutionaries overthrew Charles X for violating the Constitution. Louis Philippe replaced him. The violent nature of the earlier French revolutions and the need for a vibrant French national culture led to the creation of this painting which strove to be a French national masterpiece. The painting can be compared to a work by another romantic painter, Francisco de Goya. Goya's 3rd of May, 1808, is a similar reaction to revolutionary events of the time, depicting a romantic account rather than a fully accurate one. Like Liberty Leading the People, 3rd of May, 1808's central figure is illuminated by light. However, this figure is not strong in leading, as is Liberty. He is being executed, illustrating an apparent death of Liberty. According to the Khan Academy, this historically reflects Napoleon's conquest of Spain and the execution of resistance leaders. While Delacroix's piece is optimistic, showing liberty leading people out of darkness, Goya's is pessimistic, as the only light in the painting is being put out by a dark firing squad. These paintings are both highly emotional, utilizing color and light to create a mood rather than an obvious subject. Both are romantic masterpieces in their own rights. The two romantic works are known for a contrast of light and dark. Their central figures are both lit brightly, and both are messianic figures. Goya's Messiah is dying to atone for his people's revolutionary sins. Delacroix's Messiah is a powerful figure, saving the people by force. The line in both paintings is not as rigidly defined as previously could be found in works. This is due to the painting's romantic nature. While neither use much variation in color, the French tricolor gives Delacroix's painting the edge in color variation. Goya's 3rd of May 1808 is mostly black, whereas almost all of Delacroix's liberty leading the people contains some figure or image. Liberty leading the people is my favorite work of art. The emotion it was meant to elicit is very much elicited from me, and I am astounded by it. The human drive for freedom and the perseverance of the human spirit are themes in this painting, and that speaks volumes to me. The color palette creates an optimistic brightness around liberty, and gives a hopeful feeling to viewers, including myself. The tone is not stuck in the revolutionary days. It is present now. People have a natural need for liberty, and they need to be led by it.